so funny. What's everybody drinking? Water. They're drinking water. Water. Oh. I know. I'm drinking wine. As a wine How's the Carignan? It's great. I don't know what that means. Carignan is a red grape. Um, it It's mostly grown in Chile now. But it, Chile? Yeah. It um, originates from France and was used as a blending grape for mm. a long time in bolder red blends. But, you know, in the last 30 years or so, it's kind of emerged as its own its own I have variety. never heard of it and I'm not a wine connoisseur at all but I love to drink it mm-hmm. but I've never heard of I've, I'm sure I've seen it on menus somewhere but I have, I've just never tried it it's not that common oh oh you go ahead okay I was gonna say <laughs> as a matter of fact I was trying to get to find one that I liked for the list at Redbird recently and okay. they're, they're not so common huh interesting yeah. have you guys been to Redbird yet Oh yes, okay. delicious! I, have I love. To admit I have not been yet. We well, gotta go. What's keeping you? His burger is not thirty one dollars. It's not. It's more than I would like to charge for. But food is so expensive. expensive now. No, we it understand. Is. It's wild. I love the interior at Redbird. Thank you. It's like I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? I for love you? it. It's so cute. Uh, Smith Haynes did. Oh okay. Yeah. And then my friend Morgan did all your plating. From, yes. Yeah, table one. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, like perfect. The custom little. This is actually a great intro since we're talking about Redbird. You want to give a little um, bio on yourself, Zeb? Uh, sure. How deep should we go? Um, <laughs> originally from the Midwest, um, moved down to this area in 2001 to pursue a career in uh, in food. I was living in Indiana at the time where I'm from. Things weren't going great. So came down, lived with my folks. And fast forward 21 years, I'm chef and partner at Redbird in West Midtown. It's, I kind of don't know how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I definitely want to dig into that a little bit more. Uh, Lauren, you want to give a, a background? Sure. Um, I'm Lauren Finney Harden. I am the former editor in chief of the Atlantan magazine here in Atlanta. And I also write now for a whole bunch of uh, websites and magazines Simply Buckhead, Atlanta Magazine. Um, I am a native of Atlanta. Did a quick little hop in New York for a little while, but now I'm back for good. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm Natalie. Um, I think our uh, viewers have seen me once or twice on here, but I oversee people operations, which means HR, recruiting, <coughs> employee programs, other fun stuff that we do here internally. Um, and Imani is is on our team here at Hermius. Um, I'm Imani Beckles, new face to the podcast, um, <laughs> recent addition to our team. Love it. I am our growth manager. What that looks like outside of Hermia's terms is like economic development, keeping our relationships with our state and local level. Um, I like to say in terms like we go really fast. So all the things that would slow us up, I take care of that. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, So so Zeb, um, we were just talking about Redbird a little bit. So Mm -hmm. how would you, how do you describe what Redbird is? I mean, Redbird is, I like to consider Redbird to be ingredient driven as a restaurant rather than conceptually driven. Okay. And, 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 you know, for the viewer, a lot of a lot of restaurants tend to be concept driven and by that it's either a Spanish restaurant or it's mm. an Italian restaurant or it's a Southern restaurant. And I've worked in most of those kind of restaurants and I've always found it to be a little confining. Mm-hmm. And so when I ideated Redbird and, and started working on it, I said, well, I just want to have a restaurant where the ingredients make the decisions about what the dish is going to be mm-hmm. as opposed to the concept. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that's what I set out to do. And that's, that's what we work on. And, um, and it's a lot of fun. It's very challenging. Um, sometimes horrifying, <laughs> especially over the last couple of years. I'm going to be yeah. honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but Redbird is a place for people to come and share food with people that they enjoy. I love that. Can I tell you how I described it when I yes. read about it? I said it was like the best like neighborhood restaurant. It yeah. was what I had been searching for after living in New York for so long and coming home to Atlanta. I just felt like I was like going out in the East Village or Brooklyn mm-hmm. and it was like this great neighborhood restaurant where the dishes were amazing and it wasn't like first course, second mm-hmm. course, third course. It was yeah. just, you know, you eat how you want to eat. I've taken my baby there. I've done date night there. We've done dinners out there. My family's been there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is great. So I used to live in West Midtown. Oh, really? And I lived in the building above Cooks and Soldiers when you all opened. And so um, I would always do walks over there 
um, prior to you all going in and prior to Forza Storico going in. And so I would always like peep in and be like, something great's going to go in here. Cause it's like, the space is incredible. Um, oh, yeah. it like, it's, it's just so insane. And so when you all opened, I was like, yes. Cause like, there's a lot of food over there. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's nothing quite like Redbird in that specific area. And so it was like a really nice addition to just like the general like scene and vibe. I personally like walkable areas where I can go somewhere for, appetizers or drinks and then go somewhere for dinner then go you know out and and get late night drinks somewhere so it's like i love that feeling of west side provision so i think it's so cool and with west midtown i mean it has changed so much Mm -hmm. in the last 10 years and so much for the better and it is continuing to evolve as a real destination it's exciting to be part of it yeah i'm like monty and zeb and, and lauren like how do you all think that Atlanta has changed and specifically that area for, for the better or maybe for the worse. Oh, so coming from somebody that went to Georgia state and I would drive Mm. that West Marietta (laughs) street all the time. Um, there are no longer potholes. Um, it used to be, it used to be so desolate that it didn't matter. Don't take Howell Mill. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Mm Howell Mill is the absolute worst. But I remember when the only options out there on that strip were Taqueria de Sol because it was mm-hmm. hidden in that parking lot. When Bar Taco came, that was like, whoa. Yeah. And now it's just exploding. So it gives you a lot of places to go to on the weekend, not to mention the putt shack that they just threw up there. Mm-hmm. Like, Crazy. The interlock is insane. The, insane but it's it's nice to have that and to see um, the city put some efforts in that mm-hmm. area because yeah. it as we see now, it was a um, very promising piece of real estate. Very. Yeah. I mean, that that's my neighborhood. I still claim <clears> it. I used to live at West Side Provisions, too, oh, across awesome. the street. Um, and I now live on the far west side of Buckhead. So okay. I still say it's my, I'm Upper West Side. Like, from West Side Provisions to where I am, that's that's my, my place. And there are so many restaurants um, where you can take your children and nobody mm-hmm. is going to, like, yell at you. And it's, like, amazing <laughs> good food. Uh-huh. Um, which, you know, I don't feel like I have to eat only at fast casual stuff. Like we can like go out for a family meal to somewhere that is like really mm-hmm. quality, good food. And as a child growing up in Atlanta in the North suburbs, I would have never imagined myself living where I live now, but I am all about that neighborhood. There's so much to do. We spend a lot of time at the works, mm-hmm. um, because it's so family friendly, mm-hmm. Um, and all the way back over there, like Nuevo Laredo, Tuzo Taco. Like we never have to leave our neighborhood. That's which awesome. Is, you know, sometimes in Atlanta, a great thing. I've never really thought about that from like a family or like child perspective, how family friendly a lot of how, how many family friendly options there are over in that area. But more specifically, just like Atlanta, like we have a lot of people here that have very small children to like medium sized kids <laughs> and um, <laughs> and they're like really active. And, yeah. you know, as as a um, no child person, I just I give it zero consideration because it's not part of my day to day life. So it's really cool to hear that um, the ease of taking your family out is is there. Yeah, we we have so many places we love to go and it, they're not you know, again, like I, I, I write about food. I love food. I love quality food, good ingredients. Like they're not like mm. chain restaurants. Uh-huh. Like we, we go to really good places. Yeah. But I, I think that what I know of Atlanta is really, uh, let me see if I can articulate this property or properly. Atlanta, I think really embraces independent restaurants. Yes. I've, mm-hmm. I've always, and I've seen a lot of operators from other places come in and try to put some stakes in the ground in Atlanta, mm-hmm. but Atlanta loves their hometown people. Yeah. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. It is great. Are all y- oh, I know you're not Southern. You're, you, y'all are Southern adopted. Yeah. You're Southern. Uh, from Kentucky. So yes, okay. but not, not Georgia Southern. Well, you know, we like to keep, we <laughs> like to keep our people. We like yes. To, yeah. You know, and it's all about connections and networking. Mm-hmm. And I know, of course I know mm-hmm. so-and-so I'm sure you're like that with farmers. Oh yeah. I'm like that with, you know, everybody like, Oh, don't worry. I'll help you out with whatever, whatever. Uh-huh. It's such a different way of living. So when you were at the Atlantan is, so you wrote an article about us a mm-hmm. couple years ago and were you, did you write for, did you write that article while you were with the Atlantan? Yes. Okay. How did you find out about us? Like, how did that come across your desk? I can tell you exactly. <laughs> I remember it. Um, I was reading Airmail, Graydon Carter's newsletter um, that he's had for a while. And I think he must have only had Airmail for like six months at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, And there was an article about Hermes in there. And I was like, am I reading this right? This is based in Atlanta. (laughs) Um, And so when I was looking for content, I was like, this sounds amazing. And I 
think I hit up AJ on LinkedIn. And I was like, he's never going to respond to me. And he did. And I came out to the field and it was just the four of them. And they're like custom Nike sneakers in this like amazing <laughs> shot in this like shipping container. Uh-huh. I was like, guys, I don't even know what I'm looking at. I, way above my head. But this is so cool. And honestly, it was one of the, my favorite things that I've ever done for the magazine. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it was it was really cool to get public support or local public support early on. Um, so yeah, I think you did write that when it was just the four of them. And I mentioned when, when you came in today that we're now a little over 50 total employees. So we're a completely different company than last time that you were here. So we'll have to take you back out to the test site. That looks a little different too. Now. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm really walking across all these runways and I'm like, mm-hmm. where am I? <laughs> I know it's, it's a truck to get out there. Um, but, but something that we put a, a huge focus on internally here is culture. Um, and Zeb, I, I saw one of your or Redbird's Instagram account. I don't know if you run that or if you offer a social media person. Um, You're looking at it. Okay. <laughs> you do great. Oh, thank you. Do you. Great. That was you a sassy great. post about the cinnamon rolls the other day. Oh. <laughs> I was into it. <laughs> Wait, I'm just saying what's what on my mind. Say, what did it say? Well, this, this story. Oh, was goes, that the one that you were eating? No. Oh, okay. You're talking about this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we not to get too now. in the weeds, but on Saturdays and Sundays, we have, uh, it's called Birdie Biscuits. It was, mm-hmm. a, and I, Every time I use the term COVID pivot, I really, truly hope it's the last time. And it never is. <laughs> uh-huh. But it was the thing that we did because I couldn't afford to open the dining room for brunch. But mm-hmm. we had to make some money on the weekend. So we started this walk-up window where we did biscuit sandwiches. They're really good. I'm just going to... Confirmed. Yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, along the way, I, I started taking the, the trimmings from Saturday's biscuits and making a, a cinnamon roll out of them. Mm-hmm. And I called it the Sunday Cinnabiscuit. And it's also confirmed really good. I've got one on the counter at home. I love it. It's yeah. going in my face after Yeah, this. I love it. <laughs> at any rate, I only made two dozen of them, sell out quick. People are really into the Sunday Cinna Biscuit, and they were troubling me. Chef, you got to learn. you got to figure out how to make them for Saturday. Uh-huh. Can we please get Sunday Cinna Biscuits on Saturday? I worked with my pastry chef. We made the Sunday Cinna Biscuits on Saturday, and nobody bought them. <laughs> Wait. And so I'm just feeding them to the staff, uh-huh. which they were happy. They're damn happy. Yeah. And uh, but at the same time. So I, I just I threw up this post this weekend. I'm like, listen, gang, you asked for it. Yeah. And now you're not here. What, what's going on? What are I we love doing? It. Did they know that they were going to be there on Saturday? I, I certainly hope so, because I had gone to what I consider some effort to make sure that people <laughs> It was knew, basically but. respectfully besties. Get your act together and buy these cinnamon biscuits. I love that. That's fantastic. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> also, it. they sold out on Saturday this well, weekend. So. Okay. That's great. Yeah. I love direct messaging or like direct marketing messaging. Like it, it's the best. Um, but something that I saw that you posted on, on on the Redbird account is like a staff appreciation post. Mm-hmm. And within that, you you mentioned, you know, you've, you've got like a really talented, unique team. So it's like, how do you, it, in a, specifically like in a high turnover industry, how do you cultivate a, a strong culture um, that, that people get excited to come to work for? Um, I still figure, I, I, I still think that I'm figuring this out okay. as we go every day. And so I don't know if I really feel qualified to give you an answer because that would assume that I know what I'm doing. Uh-huh. But what has worked thus Yeah, far? what's worked? What has worked, and, and things have shifted greatly since my restaurant has reopened. It's a different place. Mm-hmm. I'm a different boss. We're a different operation. Um, And one of the things that's happened, and everybody knows this, is that wages have gone up. Mm -hmm. People expect to be paid more for the work they do. And that's that's completely understandable. I'm on board 100%. Mm -hmm. An interesting thing has happened along with that because the restaurant business um, has typically devalued and, you know, borderline or outright exploited people for a long time. Um, But now all of a sudden we have this big shift and people are coming back to work and they want to be treated like professionals. They Mm -hmm. want to be paid like a real professional in a professional field. And I want to do that. And in turn, we all now, we have this agreement. We expect a different level of professionalism from each other Mm -hmm. in both directions than we did before. And so it's a lot easier and it's a lot more fun to cultivate great culture when I'm looking around at my team and I'm like, these aren't fly-by-nights. Right. These, these are people who are, you know, they view themselves as professionals. 
I view them as professionals. And all of a sudden, the spirit of helpfulness, the spirit of teamwork, it all grows upon itself. Um, I had to learn some lessons along the way, not yell at people. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm sorry, but that, I, uh -huh. that's those are the kitchens that I came up in. Yeah, yeah. And so I've had to do a lot of work on myself, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and learn to communicate better. And honestly, one really simple thing is just say thank you, be grateful, tell people mm -hmm. they're doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. you know. That's I call that the Southern way, even though you're you're essentially in Atlanta. I mean, you're not yeah. essentially, you are. But in New York, people would always be freaked out when I would like say thank you or if I messed something up and I would immediately take the blame. Yeah. They would be like mm. so caught off guard that I like owned up to something <laughs> that they'd be like, uh, okay, just don't do it again. Um, and I feel like that's just like a very like Southern thing to just be gracious and grateful mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and express it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We spend a lot of time talking things through, yeah, you know, and having tough conversations. And one of the reasons why my business, I think, or not just my business, but the restaurant business as a whole has been as toxic as it has been for so long is because people didn't have the tools or didn't take advantage of the tools that they needed to have tough conversations. If somebody's underperforming, mm -hmm. they would just berate them instead yeah. of stopping for a second saying, look, I respect you. I need to tell you that you're not living up to my expectations. Let's work together. This is how we can improve it. Instead, they're just like, you're a, you know. Yeah. 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 Get out of here. How, yeah. do you, how do you think that, like, improved team morale has impacted, like, the bottom line? Um, well, honestly, the bottom line ain't great right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I mean, I, I do feel like when you um, – I worked in – two restaurants. I was terrible. Like the absolute worst. But I've seen worse, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I gained so much respect for um, the people that work in that industry, mm -hmm. regardless if you're a hostess, a chef, uh, a, wait a waitress, whatever. Um, I gained so much respect because it's really freaking hard. And the demands of the consumer are so freaking high. Mm -hmm. And so it's like when I go into restaurants, I notice when people aren't um, paying attention or uh, or if it's just a job. So I'm, I'm going to say something potentially controversial here. I've, I've said this internally to the team, but it's like what you're trying to do at Redbird, I think is really interesting as far as like building the team and, and getting everybody bought in. Because at, at some point when everyone's bought in, it's not just a job. It's something more than that. It, it serves a higher purpose than just getting a paycheck. It's a different energy. It, yeah. Totally. And there's nothing wrong with having a job to get a paycheck. Like there's no, nothing wrong with that. of course not. But when, when you have that little extra cherry on top, mm -hmm. it makes a massive difference to how you show up to your job, how mm. you interact with your teammates, how you interact with your customers if you have customers. I just think there's a massive difference when the when an individual views what they're doing is more than just a job. Zeb, what do you, sorry to cut no, you off. No, no, not at all. What's the term that you give your team? What was it called? Like, Natalie, what did it say on that post? It's your. Oh, your, your fam jam or something. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. We loved it. Fam jam was, uh, that was a term we used um, back in the day to refer to family meal. Okay. That was the fam jam. And I love it's it. just kind of. Uh, parlayed itself into a different meaning and it's the fam jam it's those are you know those I'm are my really people i'm hungry right now i know, <laughs> I know i'm starving too <laughs> that's hilarious like, but <laughs> you know to your point um imani about how you, you can feel that energy when everybody's bought in i remember um one of my favorite restaurants kimball house mm -hmm. when they oh, when yes. they first opened the, the the first time that i went to that restaurant i was stunned when I walked in the door by the spirit of it, because mm -hmm. you could tell that everybody who was working there was really excited to be there. And they really, they were happy and you could feel it. Mm -hmm. And it made the whole experience better. It made it, mm -hmm. I don't even remember what I had. I'm yeah. sure it was great. Oysters, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they said oysters there. Huh. <laughs> um, but no, but, but yeah, it's, it's palpable. Yeah. When the culture is good, mm -hmm. when the culture you know, somebody said, uh, I heard recently, your business, no matter what it is, has culture. Yep. Mm -hmm. No matter what. No matter it's what. It's got it. If, if you're trying or not, yep. it, it's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you may as well make an effort to to build it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Lauren, what is like, whether it comes to food or just activities, like what are some hidden gems in Atlanta um, that may not be super popular that you love hmm. frequenting? I, I promise this isn't a paid advertisement for Westside Provisions, but we do <laughs> we do that a lot. Like there's just a lot to see. There's a yeah. lot to do. It's nice to be outside. You can meander. Mm -hmm. You can, there are shops where it's much more aspirational. You can go in and browse. There are mm -hmm. places where you're like, oh, I, I need to get that. Let me go pick that up. Um, we do that a lot. I I grew up out there and it's 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 still a lovely place. I'm actually shocked the way Alpharetta has changed mm -hmm. since I grew up there. I mean, my parents were embarrassed when they moved there in 1986 because they were just all, it was cow pasture. Really? There was nothing out there. Huh. Oh my God, there was nothing out there. And my dad worked all the way downtown and he had this like long commute. And they're like, this is all we can afford. And then now it's just totally Spoon. different. Yeah. Um, so I, if people are here living here and they haven't been to Avalon or out that way, it's just anywhere where, of course, this is the former New Yorker, anywhere you can walk, mm -hmm. anywhere you can do multiple things. Mm -hmm. I love the works. Um, we are still big Beltline people, um, although we like to do a lot of more like Bobby Jones Beltline than like mm, yeah. you know, Beltline Beltline. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, there's I could give you a long list of food places to go to. Well, in the West Side, there's like a big, um, like, I guess, interior design mm -hmm. kind of vibe. I like just walking through the furniture stores. I have zero, I have a zero design bones in my body. Um, but I love walking through those, those stores and just like looking, but you have a, you have a background or interest in interior design, correct? Yeah. I've been writing about interior design for a long time. Um, the West side is our unofficial design district. Like yeah. Miami has like the design district. Mm -hmm. The West side is like where it's all at and it's all kind of like come up. Um, Bobo intriguing objects was over there in a warehouse for the longest time by itself, mm -hmm. nothing around. And then now it's kind of like revitalized. It's ha they have their first um, storefront over there and then everything that's been built up around it there are antique stores there are furniture shops there's cute little markets like have you ever been to floral park market i never have it's really cute really yeah i've never really even cute. heard of that what is that it's <laughs> off chabert avenue so like if you're going down howell mill towards west side provisions you'll take the last left before the reservoir okay it's like hidden um what's down there monday night monday brewing. night brewing yeah. Yeah. oh nice um and there's there's a really good it's almost like a picker spot antique spot all the way at the end of the okay. street um, and then the daily which came from charleston just mm -hmm. opened on that street as well what's the name of that uh that spot that's right next to like bacchanalia um and top golf star provisions oh you mean the interiors market? the interiors market. Uh, west side market yeah oh, i love that place yeah i like just going and brow like i don't have i don't need need anything it's about as big as this place it is it's <laughs> massive and it's like set up with all these like different local vendors mm -hmm. um i just i love going around there and just like perusing a little bit yeah um we're big and this is not a hidden secret we're big peach tree road farmers market people mm. on saturdays because there's the playgrounds we can bring the dog there's all these like amazing vendors that we can get you mm -hmm. know breakfast or lunch or whatever from um it's a great way to uh and then we see people we know there all the time yeah that's um, awesome. Yeah, we love that. When does it reopen for the year? Do you have? It's open. Oh, it has it reopened? Yeah, that's awesome. I haven't been. I haven't been to do my demo in a few years. But a lot of the farmers that I work with are at are Peach there. Tree yeah. Right it's, oh, that's it's cool. Set, like they'll have baby goats and you oh, know, wait. and there's like. Did we just find our weekend activity? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Not every weekend. Yeah. Um, but just like once a month. I, you know, I don't even know when they trotted the baby goats out. It was all a haze last year, but I did see I did see baby goats at some point there okay. last year. Yeah, and and you mentioned the Beltline, so I live right in the heart of the Beltline, like right at, uh, uh, basically right next to Pont City Market, and it's just mayhem on the mm -hmm. weekend. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! So I want to be in a spot where I can walk because I wasn't yeah. out being on the west side. I loved it because I could walk. All everywhere in Westside Provisions. What I was missing was a a market, like yeah. a grocery store. But they're putting in a star uh, Savi's over there. I think it's further. It's there's one further on down. West Marietta, and then they're putting one on Collier. Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also just like needed a, a few more trees in my life, um, and so I, I moved over to Beltline, which I guess is like Old Fourth Ward area right there, and. It is amazing because I'm I'm just like in the middle of all the chaos um, and all of the the music. I mean, yesterday all day I had my window open and there was a violinist on on the belt line for hours. Um, so that's really exciting. Is, is that good or bad? Um, 
I think it depends on my mood. Yesterday it was fine. Um, but I also like, I don't have kids at home. So like l- l- loud music doesn't like really bother me that much unless it's like late, um, which also happens because all those bars are yeah. right there on the belt line. So that gets, uh, when I go to bed super early. So when they're still like going at 10 o'clock at night, I'm like, oh my God. Um, yeah, I had a two chains concert in my front yard when I lived upon City Market. Did you say a two chains? Mm-hmm. Okay, and I was like, wow. I think we're done here. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a Sunday night and it was like midnight. And I was like, I think we need to move. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot. Um, yeah. I think something like there was a wine festival this weekend right in front of my building and it looked popping. So I get, I get like all my news from ATL scoop and <laughs> I saw some videos of it. I was gone this weekend. So I was like bummed. I missed it. But like they were having a great time. Even in the cold weather. Even I had in friends the cold out weather. there. They oh my were, God. They were dancing. They were drinking wine. They had little snacks out. I was so bummed that I wasn't there. Cause it's like, that is the benefit of being on the belt line is there's so much around you that you can walk to. Yep. You don't, you don't really have to go to it cause it comes to you. Um, so there are multiple weekends where I don't get my car once there. Th- that is a shocking thing to me about coming back to Atlanta. And probably since you guys both have been there for a long time, you know, the before times, like oh, yeah. it used to not be, there was nowhere you could walk. Yeah. Period. Mm-hmm. End of story. You had to get in your car. Um, and now, I mean, every neighborhood has a nice little walkable mm-hmm. something or other. Yeah. They almost have to, to, to get people to move to the area, I think, because there's so many good pockets now that. I think as these developers come in and are building out these neighborhoods or or um, like improving the area, they want to make sure that grocery stores are coming in that people can walk to. I will say though, like when I walk to Kroger, I have a teeny bit of anxiety because I have to get through all the bikers and all the runners. No, and you all just the become the biker. I used to bike to Trader Joe's. So and, I did that, and yeah. I, I accidentally have hit two people oh, gotcha. on my bike. Okay, <laughs> never mind. So I'm I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> so I I have promised myself that when I ride my bicycle, it's in the morning when it's not heavily trafficked, or um, basically anytime there's not a lot of people out, which is really only the morning time, because um, otherwise mm-mm. it's, it's mayhem. There. It's yeah. insanity. When I was living in Old Fourth Ward, I made a habit of of taking my bike from you know where we were at up and down the belt line mm-hmm. and learned the rough times to do it oh man very quickly saturday yeah. period yeah. out of the question out of the question Get yeah out of here. i moved there after they reopened murder kroger and we were telling my father-in-law the other day he was like there's a kroger called murder kroger and i'm like but it is the nicest, the nicest kroger it's i've so nice. ever set foot in oh yeah so i the used to go it, when it was murder kroger yeah <laughs> we should say why it was called that i would think it's probably obvious yeah to, yeah it was some misfortune events that happened there and it truly was murder kroger mm-hmm. and to think about it now my mom probably be very upset hearing this <laughs> we would actively go there as college students at georgia state because mm-hmm. well Publix is a little too high yeah and Publix you know expensive exactly and the kroger was right there but i mean the revamp of it is beautiful and then it's really interesting that that's where it connects because before murder kroger was beautiful kroger <laughs> um nobody knew that the Beltline truly existed like yeah. you could go to old fourth ward park and i remember going and you could see nothing else like yeah who knew turban licks was like a, a, yeah. a stone away <laughs> mm-hmm. and then they got rid of that um there used to be a walking ramp that you could like get from two urban licks down to the bottom oh, really? and now i have oh, to take yeah. the stairs in an elevator that i was like i don't know my bearings anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah do y'all, sorry to hijack your podcast. No. <laughs> I was saying this to somebody else the other day. Do y'all not think Atlanta is one of the quirkiest, but second to New Orleans only, like the quirkiest cities ever? It's, I have only lived in a few cities. Um, I did live in Florida, so I feel like I can claim a little quirkiness there. Yeah. Um, but uh, quirky, yes. I think v- they Variety of individuals. Yeah. Incredible. Absolutely. Absolutely incredible. And were you about to say ATL Scoop Yeah, I highlights? think it's called it to my attention yeah. more so than ever. It's like, that would only happen in Atlanta. It, it does. But it's just like, it's it's really cool. So one of my favorite things, I, um, I don't ever get on my Facebook page, but the last time I updated it, um, my like background shot, whatever that is, like from my profile picture, is there's the drummer that sits underneath the overpass at Old Fourth Ward Park. Mm-hmm. And he's incredible. And so um, I used to participate in acro yoga out there oh, cool. um, at the park. And so one day I went over and I just started doing handstands next to him drumming. And he's like smiling. I got this awesome photo. And it was just like 
the photo alone, like if you didn't know what was going on, you'd be like, why is this person handstanding one? Why is this person drumming on a sidewalk and why are they in the same place? You know, so it's like yeah. all very weird, but it's like one of my favorite pictures because it's just like it speaks and there's like all this graffiti in the background on that where they um, I feel like they refresh it almost like weekly now. Yeah, but it's it's so cool. And I, I think something that I I didn't really appreciate anywhere that I've lived before is the art in Atlanta mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the, um, I guess, promotion of whether it's graffiti artist or just like all different types of art. They're in doing a bunch of new installations on the Beltline recently. Um, and just, just seeing that kind of like build and seeing those artists get like um, recognition instead of people getting mad at them, I think is so cool. Yeah, This has been the only city where I've seen like creativity, entrepreneurship be promoted at the rate yeah, that it is. You can take a lot of, correct me if I'm wrong, you're the restaurateur here, but like you, I feel like you can take a lot more risks in Atlanta and be a little bit better off because of the support than other cities. Yeah. That's I think the there's something to do that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Where do you all get your Atlanta news? Whether it's like, what's the newest restaurant that opened or What's going on in this side of town? Like, where do you all go? My inbox. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's so fair. it comes to you. It comes to me. Okay. Um, but Eater, um, Atlanta Magazine, um, ATL Scoop, um, restaurant stuff usually comes straight to me. Or I'm really, this is from magazine days, I'm really weird about going on, like, the sites that will report on, like, the permitting stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, like, good. what now, Atlanta, and all of that. And tomorrow's news today. get that email every morning. Me too. <laughs> um, so that I'll know, like, something's coming, you know, two years from now. And for the interlock, I mean, I must have sat on that for five years. I'm like, no, 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 it's coming, it's coming. And then it was supposed to open right as we were leaving and COVID and all of those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I... Tomorrow's news today, and what now, Atlanta? Right, oh, yeah. That's the name of it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. how does news come to you? So, are you on? Do, do people know? Like, hey, I I need to have Lauren on my email list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of it, honestly, is from social media too. Like, I found some really small um, caftan brand that's based in Atlanta, and I hmm. found them on on Instagram, and I was like, oh, okay, well, that's something I could possibly feature later. Okay, yeah. so so do you just like kind of peruse Instagram yeah. for local? I'm an internet ninja. Okay, I can find, <laughs> I, it's like very scary that I can find anyone's email name, business name. Like, yeah, it's. I love yeah. that. If FBI man, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> you we probably me. do Hire have some <laughs> listening. <laughs> um, Amani, what about you? So where do I get my news and things from? So news wise, it is a lot of ATL scoop now. It's very hilarious that that has come to it. Isn't but that wild? User generated news. Literally user generated. I was telling Natalie the other day, the woman that runs it doesn't even live here. But Oh, really? Mm-mm. She does not live here. But even when I'm like away, um, I'm like, what's going on in the city today? Mm-hmm. And I'll get on ATL scoop and she'll have it posted. There's like a fame thing too associated with it because it's like when I have friends that uh, make a uh, have a story and then tag ATL stoop, scoop and they get reposted, reposted. they then that. repost it themselves and they're like I'm famous yeah. you know <laughs> and that kills me but it is it's it's so like if I want to know like what's going on in, in an area I don't go to the news channels no. I go to ATL scoop for they get it late and it's of course curated content right. it's not like the raw thing that happened and I'll be honest, sometimes the things that they show, I do not want to see. Nope. Um, and so I do think that is like the downside of it. I think it could be a little bit more um, filtered sometimes. Tactful. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think so. Because sometimes like, you know, it's some things aren't meant for the public. Um, but I will say that like it's usually very accurate. It's very rare that someone's on there being like or, or tagging ATL scoop with a false report of something. Um, and so it's, it's, it's wild how informative an Instagram page has been in real time. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Where do you get restaurant news friends? 
Uh, gossip. Yeah, gossip. Yeah. gossip. Oh, that's great. Oh, yes. My industry is rife with gossip. Do oh. people call you or can, or do you know who to call for the right information? They hit me up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get text messages. I get calls. Hey, I heard this. Have you heard anything about that? What is like the hot goss in the restaurant industry? Is it these this restaurant's closing, this restaurant's opening? I um, have. <clears throat> re, reorgs. <laughs> he just clammed up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me. Uh. Uh, well, Zeb uh, does that. So, um, in my in my past life, when I was in the foodie community, it's always like notable chefs that are like either great or really awful. Um, that's typically it. Um, I've heard about food sourcing. Somebody when they open really high quality food sourcing and then as they go on it, <gasps> what is it, food sourcing like like the quality of their Ooh. food goes we'll go down oh. Ooh, all, oh. the, yeah. all the lies that chefs tell about how local they really are oh Ooh. that's okay. hot gas for real so 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 how can you find out the truth of if someone says we source local from th- these farms blah 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 how can you actually find out if that's true is there a way the, <laughs> Short of working inside the operation? Uh, no, not really. You're taking it at face value. Okay. And it requires us to actually so be no, truthful. So there's with you. no like audit process. It's certainly not. No. <laughs> it's like the Wild West. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. It's Got wide it. open. Okay. Wasn't there a um uh, wasn't there a, an investigative article, I think from Tampa, Florida, a few years ago about restaurants saying and doing just that? And mm-hmm. it turns out that all these restaurants are saying, oh, we serve local food, and they just weren't. Yeah. Or that it's Here like comes a, a Cisco truck. Exactly. Cisco truck coming. Yeah. Or like a fish oh dupe. Gosh. Like they say it's one fish and it's just another that fish. That is unbelievable. And I know that it happens, and it's horrifying. What is it, like the branding on Mahi Mahi? is like, poor Mahi Mahi has gotten the worst branding out of all the oh, fish. Yeah. My dad, um, sweet, sweet man, um, born and raised in West Virginia. And I only say that because... When I lived in Florida, uh, he would come visit me. And this just made me think of it. Uh, he has a very, I will say, simple palate. Um, and so he was experiencing seafood um, along with myself for some of the first times. Mm-hmm. We went out to a restaurant <laughs> and he <laughs> ordered and he goes, I'll take the Mai Mai. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, OK, so for someone that <laughs> is going to get like duped by fake fish or like one fish trading for another, it's definitely my dad. Um, but like there's probably a lot of people I I am obsessed with seafood, me but too. I don't know it well enough. I don't think to like I couldn't taste a white fish probably blindfolded and say what it is question for you is this yeah. is this a f- real or fake i heard that atlanta has some of the best seafood because of the number of flights that we get in every day that's very true yep. okay oh. mm-hmm. that is good to know yeah, yeah i, I just saw we were recrowned the number one airport in the busiest airport in the world yes when I was well, the number one yeah that makes I sense. think it's the number one. Yeah. Have like, you been to other airports? Yeah, for yeah, sure. I know, right? I'm like, this place is beautiful. Um, where are you eating these days? Ooh. Mostly on the back deck at home. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you cook at home. So after cooking absolutely. all day. Absolutely. Wow. Oh. I know. People are always surprised to hear that. They think that chefs don't I don't know what anybody else does. What do you what I, do you cook for yourself that you're just like, yes, this is amazing? Well, I have a... I have a couple of whole snappers at home right now Ooh, and some yeah. artichokes that I peeled. She's going to steam them off when she gets home, and then we're going to put them in the wood-burning oven out back. Okay. I rebuilt my back deck I was about to say, year. did you move into a home that had a wood-burning? Like no. St- okay. okay. No. But I, when I, I have two big green eggs, and so I built this table oh, that incredible. built them in. and. Nerd. Cool. Yeah. That's nerd, awesome. Nerd homeowner stuff. Wait. We're all coming over for dinner. I know. Today. I'm Come like, on, ha, let's ha, go. Ha, has it been featured in any local publication? It yet? Has not. We know someone. <laughs> it has not. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm being dead serious. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's just it's just our backyard hang. Cool. But to answer your question, because people do want to hear about Atlanta restaurants, I'm a big fan of Ticonderoga Club. Yeah, always. Oh, big so good. Fan. So good. Congrats to them, too, for the nom. Amazing. And what nomination did they get? James Beard. James Beard. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And when we talk about great hospitality, this crew, yeah. everybody could take notes. Mm-hmm. These people, they're, you know, and not just because they're dear friends of mine, but because they're really good at it. Yeah. They're really, really hospitable. They put out a great product and a uh, I can't say enough good about them. Yeah, well, everything from like th- the food, their cocktails, all the way down, down to like the vibe, and it's like a little surprising to be in a 
food hall. Right. I think like the stark difference because it's it's in Krog City Market. Um, to be in is it is that the name of it? Krog Street, Krog Market. Street Market. Krog Street. Market. Yeah. Um, to be in like a food hall that's like very very casual. And Ticonderoga isn't, I wouldn't say fancy, but like when I go there, like I look good, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going there to think that I'm going to be like in tennis shoes walking around a a food hall. And so it's like the stark difference is, is really kind of edgy almost. I'm like, I do. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody's casual these days. That is true. It's great. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's wonderful that we've ditched this idea that you've got to put on a suit to go out to dinner. Oh, I love that. And I'll tell you, that was one of my biggest goals with Redbird and, and we've achieved it. You can come on a Saturday night and see, somebody in a suit and somebody in cut off shorts. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly the way I think it should be. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And the city as a whole seems to have embraced that. They have. I was just in New York and every, like I got overdressed for dinner. Like I was, I was wet and I wasn't even in any, I think I was wearing these pants. I was like, I was majorly overdressed for dinner. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. I was like, everyone's cool with it. I mean, people were wearing like, now they were wearing like Balenciaga sneakers, but they were yeah. wearing sneakers. Yeah. Like it was cool. I haven't noticed that. So my, um, my boyfriend lives in Buckhead. I've never spent a lot of time in Buckhead, um, until recently. And I still go out casually and I, that has not caught on there in my opinion. Oh, yeah, not in <laughs> Depends. <laughs> have you been to Lucian yet? I have. I really like that. Where's that? I really place? like it too. Far in Peachtree. Great wine okay. list. Great wine list. Small place, there. just like Redbird. Um, beautiful, beautiful restaurant. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll have to add that to the list this weekend. Ed Sieber yeah, me, did me and Amani uh, are over here like where? taking notes, like, let's go. I was, I was saying Ed Sieber did the design there. Uh, yeah, and it's beautiful. And he's amazing. Okay. His work is brilliant. And they have, they have um, something called a soft. Which, which is, is made with non non-alco- alcoholic. It's Gia, oh. like an aperitif, and it is delicious. Huh. I think about I'm it. Have to try that. Okay. Yeah, Anytime I'm in Buckhead, I'm only going to Cheeto and Padre just because oh, I just love so them. Yeah, no, that's good. I love them there. But um, Lucian is great. It's a great date night. It's great for like a small group. I, I just, it's not, I would never bring my child there, but it's. Okay. <laughs> you need places for yourself. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. Did you pick up any books when you were there? No, but I really oh, that's wanted on, to. It's on the corner there. Yes. Okay. So I've, I've seen it and it looked like a um like a it looks like a bookstore from the outside yeah. but it it like advertises cocktails i think in one of their signs like i wasn't really sure i didn't mm-hmm. know if it was just like an upscale little coffee shop where you could get a cocktail so that's good to know that it's like a, a full on restaurant i'm very excited about the design like level up in atlanta buckhead specifically so between that and Lebanon, nosh i'm like good for my design and food. oh my god it's good it's incredible it's good. yeah i went for br- for brunch and the interior is like yeah. so I'm not like a fancy person, but the interior is so plush and like their drapes are floor to ceiling and they've got like, I don't know, probably like 20 foot, if not higher ceilings. And it's just like everything's velvet yeah. and they've got these big pillows and their their bars are really um, kind of like uniquely tailored, like it's a French. Um, it's like Mediterranean French. They have a French pastry program, mm-hmm. which is delicious. They have the chicest high chairs. Um, it's where I. Oh, if, it, <laughs> they really do. do. They really do. Um, and it's the, like where I bring um, out of towners, like New Yorkers and people from LA, to because they're like, oh wow, this I didn't know Atlanta was like that. It's and I'm so like, oh, trendy. Like, mm-hmm. What did you eat? Because I have friends that won't do brunch because they don't do breakfast, and it like hurts my feelings every day. Oh, um, I, I got the. Um, I'm going to say it wrong. Um, I do their galettes and tartines a lot. Um, we do the French lentil salad. Um, I have even, like chicken salad. Um, oh, what's can, the Mediterranean dish there. that's like mostly tomatoes with like one egg in it? Shaka. Shaksuka. Shaksuka. That's yes. it. Okay. When I tell you it is delicious and it's not breakfast food mm-hmm. at least not how we identify american breakfast food no that's perfect my yeah. friends will go oh and, and it's incredible lots of, lots of pastries like mm. delicious pastries between there and the chastain i like was those just are, gonna yes. say the chastain <laughs> i was there last it. weekend oh, so Oh, yeah. they've got it on lock. They re- it's so good. And I've never been there when it's nice out. It's always been absolutely miserable and it's lying out the door. Well, for good reason. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Fan- and then the brash coffee is just what sets it over the edge. So that's wild. It's the best coffee. It is. I mean, really that, is. that is the one thing that I don't have in Old Fourth Ward is a coffee shop. I don't have one. But besides, you don't go to Chrome Yellow? Well, it's, well, I guess walking distance. Ah, so I, I do go to Chrome Yellow. Um, but it's it's not walking distance. It's like 
you know, a couple minute drive. Um, but walking distance only is dancing goats and it's fine, but like nothing compares to brass. Spiller Park. We, we're getting that? inside, inside yeah. Ponzi Market. Oh. All the way at the end by Holman and Finch. We're yeah. getting one on the west side and I'm so excited to be able to walk okay. to it. They're yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I've 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 had coffee there just like when I've been at Ponce on a on a weekday or something, just kind of mm-hmm. strolling around. But um, I just never think about it. I guess because I can't visually see it. Yeah. If they don't have the bagels at the new one, <laughs> I'm mad about that. This is a I have PSA bagels. bagels at the new one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's what is it like? Deer something bagels. Yeah. I can't remember, remember the name of it. Um, but we 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 need some bagels. Okay, you're time. from you. you yeah. I can say from New York because you lived there for nine yeah. years. So you're telling me these bagels are comparable. Like, yeah, I mean, like I think Emerald City bagels are comparable to New York bagels. Okay, have so you had good. Brooklyn bagels? Deli. It's in Alfreda is like our first I, location. I literally grew up eating there every morning. <laughs> and now did you know they have a same? You I did. Went, I went to Centennial. Sh- <laughs> so did I, but I'm probably much older than you. No, we'll talk offline. Okay. You don't have to tell anybody on that. I know. <laughs> I wasn't a huge fan of my high school. <sighs> yeah, okay. Um, but they have a new location. Did you know they're, they're I did in Ansley. I just found out this weekend. Yes, there's actually a lot going on in Ansley. So that opened, and then my friend Quinn opened this store called Odd McLean, which is a really like strange name, but her grandfather's name was Odd. I can't I believe it. That. Oh, wow. Um, and it is like, like the- O-D-D or, mm-hmm. okay. And it's like the coolest gift shop. And it's like, I'm like, we're like bringing Ansley Mall up here. But I yeah. love that. Okay. Yeah. All this right. is strange. This is very strange. <laughs> Who knew? I'm like, I literally ate there five days a week. All the time. <laughs> okay, but is it fair to say, I don't know if you ever had their strawberry schmear. They've changed it. It's not. Oh, I don't know. It's changed ownership a, long, a couple of times. Okay, that's fair. It used to be like, y'all, it used to be like the freshest strawberry cream cheese ever. Like See, true. Food quality going downhill. Here comes the Cisco truck. And now, <laughs> and now it's like the pinkest of pinks. And it used mm, to like not that. be. Red Dye 40, man. Yeah. That's wild. We've talked a lot about food. <laughs> but a, an area that I have some opinions and interest in is music. Um, Should have brought my husband with me. What does he do? <laughs> He's a music manager. What? Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. So my next question is going to be great then. What are wow. the best concerts that we've been to? Ooh. Uh, you're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> How is that possible? Because I refuse to go to any concerts. That Why? He goes to. It's he's not like it's okay. experimental and cool and like at five two nine and oh. um, yeah. And I'm okay. just you know um, what is it called? Drunken unicorn. And I'm like mm, I'm, I booked just tickets to Lady Gaga. <laughs> okay, those got aren't it. your kind of places, eh? So no. so you're the you're like the the I'm the pop princess. Okay, got okay. It. I, but it is like an yeah, like same a, the TikTok thing too. Okay. Got um, it. So if we ever go to trivia, we've got both sides like covered. That's but incredible. He, he is like Mr. Music. You strike me as a music person, yes? I en- I enjoy the musical arts. Yeah. Yes. Where yeah. do you like? What is your favorite concert hall? I mean, look, I'm a metalhead at heart. Okay. okay. I have been to so many shows at Masquerade. Okay. As a matter of fact, new or old? New and both. old. Both. Okay, okay. I was going to ask the same in, thing. In, in the last eight months or so of of old Masquerade. We went to everything, no matter what it was. If we had time, we would just go there. That's awesome. Just to see as many shows. Um, Is Masquerade known for like metal music? It's it, that's a good portion of really? okay. Yeah. There, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were you Although, were did, you there last month um, I was on not. the twenty sixth? They had like three shows. <laughs> Highly specific there. Because <laughs> I just wondered because um, there were three shows. I couldn't tell you exactly who, but I was there to see um, Joe K and the Selection Radio. He's like oh. Apple Music, Beats One, but it's like all sorts of vibes. Whether it's, whether it's like music from Brazil to like South Africa to wherever he's see, been. That sounds cool. It was really nice. Um, this weekend I saw Moonchild. So also like if you're along the lines of like soulful, nice vibes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, I'm very close with um, Ruby Vell. Do you all know her, her work? No. Uh, Ruby Vell and the Soulphonics. Okay. She, I've heard of her. She's so good. Really? Okay. Yeah. I so first, she's, a, she's local? She is local. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Her and her husband live here in Atlanta. And um, I first saw her at the Earl, which is a really interesting yes. venue. Okay. Okay. in the Earl. Yeah. The other yeah. One. And uh, was blown away. Wow. Absolutely blown away. Seen her several times, seen her at Venkman's a few times. Oh, cool. Uh, which I is a cool venue. Had, I didn't know I they had live music. about that. Right? Yeah. Venkman's has live music? Oh, yeah. That's like a little, um, it's kind of like a mini Joe's Pub almost. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to check it out. So we, my, my uh, I don't know any of the bands. I, I think it's usually the same. Um, is Northside Tavern? 
Okay, my husband's I'm, like a regular. I mean, when we lived there, like he was there every day. I am obsessed with that place. It's it's one of the grossest, grossest. bars grossest. in Atlanta. When I tell you it is the best time. So it's like my <laughs> my ideal night out is in West Side provisions, going out to like a fancy dinner, getting all dressed up, having nice cocktails. But I can't drink there because you just you can't unless it's bottled beer. And then they have the best music. The The bands that they bring on are just like so incredibly talented and also like really engaging with the crowd because people are dancing and it's like a lot of like swing dancing and stuff like that. Oh my God, it's so fun. I mean, they're standing three feet away from the crowd. I know. You're going <laughs> to have to yeah. engage with yeah, them. They are very, I mean, it's literally, it's like stage. Have and then, you ever been there where they do like a barbecue outside? I haven't. It's really fun. Okay. I'll like it, it's like out. random days. Like I don't know. Like they closed off. I can't remember what it's called when they closed off Howell Mill a couple of years ago, and I don't know if they continue to do it. Mm -hmm. But um, where you could walk basically from the Optimist all the way up. Oh wow! Yeah, and they had I don't remember what it was. It was some sort of like barbecue outside a Northside Tavern, and I remember doing karaoke with this like very old man who was performing. <laughs> he like reminded me of the guy at. Um, Sammy's Romanian in New York. He's like, he basically is like DJing like wow. a bat mitzvah. Like this guy like sits in the back and he just like heckles people. Yeah, it was super weird. But again, one of those like only in Atlanta uh -huh. can you bring these. This group of people group of have people the together. best time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I go to, um, oh God, what's it called? What's what's the theater over in, in West Midtown? Is it? Not the Tabernacle. Oh, I know what you're talking about. The new one right next to Miller Union. Not it's, new. It's not. Yeah, no, it's it's like down around on Brady Avenue. Yeah, yeah. What is it? What is it called? It's right there next to Miller there. Union and they have, West they have, Terminal. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Oh yeah, yeah. yeah Terminal West. Terminal West. Yes. Sorry, West Terminal. Um, Terminal West. They have. So I'm not like a big concert person. So when you say you go to Lady Gaga, even though I'm obsessed with her, I can't. Like it's too overwhelming for me. And like the big crowds, it's just like. And I personally don't see like if I'm not really close, I just don't enjoy it as much. So Terminal West, in my opinion, and the variety over in uh, Little Five. Great venue. Mm -hmm. Great. Great venue. They're so small. And so you, like, even if you're in the very back row, it feels like you're, like, right there with the band, just, like, hanging out, listening to music. It's so great. And everyone's just chill. And it costs, like, usually anywhere from, like, 15 to $50 max for a mm -hmm. ticket. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, other large venues are, like, Sometimes over a hundred dollars. Really ridiculous. Have y'all yeah. been to the Eastern? It's um, it and if you ever get a show and it says the Eastern and you start driving down Memorial, like going towards where um, Golden Eagle used to be, mm -hmm. it's like right. That's off where the, I got married. Ooh, mm -hmm. it's you right got off married of that. at Golden Eagle in Bacchanalia. Yeah, we did a two day thing. No way. Oh, All right, I have Golden questions. Eagle. Yeah, I did. You go on their like um, farewell tour? No. Oh, it was great. It they was, have great cocktails. It was champagne all night. It Nobody was... ate anything at my wedding. It was delicious. <laughs> I, the, 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 the bar tab was like, whoa, way up there. Everyone was drinking. Yes. Okay. Heavily. As they should. Sorry to interrupt should. you. But going down the Eastern, I feel like I feel like my husband's been there. He probably has. And it's so weird because it's like a bunch of residential buildings and then boom, it's a concert venue. And it's, wow. it's like stadium type seating. I recently saw Wale there. I'll probably go back and see Earth Gang. But... That's awesome. It's like smaller people, smaller. Um, those that benefit from like um, fans that like that intimacy yeah. of being there. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Is it like on the way to the um, drive-in? No, not that far down. So you okay. know where the new Publix is? Uh -huh. Literally like Publix, Golden Eagle. Oh. Um, formerly Golden Eagle. You walk up the street and like that first, it's like me, Chester. Like don't get okay, me to yeah, lie. Yeah. But like literally you turn down <laughs> that street and you're like, Oh, there's a whole venue here for concerts, and I had no, no idea. idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just something that they like sprinkled into the city, and I'm mm -hmm. excited about that. But anything like that can be live music wise. Like I have a friend, and she does this thing. It's called Beats and Ballads, and she finds like people that actually can like play instruments, and then people sign up and sing, and the band will harmonize with the person that cool. is singing. See, I'd be into that. And it was that is cool. Gorgeous. That is cool. Um. Being in Atlanta, we don't have a beach super, super close. We don't have skiing mountains super, super close. No, um, but we do have a lot of like really cool, drivable getaways. So like, what are your all's favorites? 
We're we're beach people. We, okay. My in-laws have a house in St. Simon's, so we are St. Simon's. Mm-hmm, so we Gorgeous. are there a lot. Um, you have to make it at least a three-day trip in order for it to be worth it. Worth the drive. But one of our favorite things to do is, of course, go looking for food like off of you know mm-hmm. there in the marsh that mm-hmm. we've had friends of friends recommend. Like what was the name? It's called Old School Diner. It just came to me. There's carpet. In the parking lot, like literally like carpet in the parking lot. There's like a 97 year old bacaw that like sits on this recliner. It was the wackiest experience ever. And the seafood was amazing. But we walked in, my husband goes, top five dining experiences ever. And I'm like, oh we God. haven't even eaten anything. But he's he like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's incredible. Yeah. So we we love to do that kind of stuff. Um, driving back and like stopping at like the cafeterias in Macon or New Way. I have to plug New Way hot yeah. dogs, even though I don't like hot dogs. Um, so we do a lot of beach. Okay. Yeah. All right. What about you, Zeb? I am not beach people. Okay. Are we mountain people? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you know, we, we tucked up to Blue Ridge mm. recently. Um, That's my favorite. Yeah. Right around Thanksgiving and, uh, you know, rented the cabin, mm-hmm. Love chilling it. in the hot tub, you know. Don't take the wrong route or you'll get sick <laughs> driving up with that loopy loop. It's a, it can get a little dicey up there. Yeah. But there's a straight route, too. So anybody yeah. that's looking to go, make sure you take the straight route. If it does that loop, yeah. I love doing awful. that. During the I pandemic, that's what we would we would go to like, um, what was it, like Clarkville and Blairsville. And mm-hmm. what's the big uh, farm that you pass on the way? Jay Moore. Yeah, yeah, Jay Moore. And we would just go to all these tiny little towns because I was like heavily pregnant. And it was super hot. And we had a puppy. It was a disaster. But... <laughs> <laughs> on weekends, <laughs> weekends we would just drive up to these random towns, and yeah. somebody would tell us about some like great place to go swimming off the highway, and we'd be like, you know, then I, as a native Georgian, like I haven't ever done that, and yeah. it was actually great to be able to explore. Mm-hmm. I drove to a, um, it, it was during lockdown. I drove to a farm. It was a solid three hours away. Okay, to pick up beef, comfort farms. Ooh, oh, Didn't I love the things that come do. from there. They've got, a, and they've got a great story, and they're great people, and they've got great products. So, was, did you just like go swing by, pick it up, and leave, or I were you there it. for? Did you like tour the grounds? I really just ordered food, drove down there, <laughs> picked it up, and then came back. That's talked, <laughs> talked to them for a little bit, and then got in the car and came back. All but right. it was nice just to get down there and just yeah. see something else. Yeah. You know? yeah, there's a lot to explore in this state. You like forget that we 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 right. we do have access to beach and mountains and mm-hmm. skiing and farms and whatever you want. Yeah, and flights to everywhere in the world. Everywhere yeah. in the world, it's time for strawberry picking again. So mm-hmm. Southern Belle, if you go down to Ooh. the yeah, area. this might be a year that we could perhaps do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also. that sounds great because it's like in the spring. I guess so. Spring is that, and then in the when is the sunflower farm season? Is that fall? It's it's like. It's coming up. Okay. Um, it's like towards the end of the summer. So like you could still be scorching okay. hot. Okay. Cool. Um, but like it's like a sweet spot. If the you go on there. The pictures that I see from those farms are just like, I don't care if it's a three hour drive and I just pop in, take a picture and leave. Like the photos are insane. And I'm like, that's something that I've really like has been on my wish list of something to do um, in Georgia. But um, I go to the the Blue Ridge Mountains all the time. So my friends and I, we have usually like annual, sometimes twice a summer, we'll go up to either like Notley, like Blue Ridge or anywhere up there. And we rent those cabins and like, it is so gorgeous. It's beautiful. You can find rentals that are um, kind of like desolate, I guess. Um, is that the right word? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And uh, and you're you're just like, you feel like you're finally out of, yeah. The chaos, our no phones hustle don't work, and, bustle. and yeah. I'm like, bless, you know. And it's it's incredible. And we, we rent a boat for a day. We get out on the water. Um, I've had some. I have very interesting stories from those trips. <laughs> um, but uh, but but generally, it's just like it's such a nice contrast from like my day to day. And it's so close. It's like an, usually where we go is like an hour and a half away. Yeah, it's the best. But there's not much, at least in my mind, that beats like the city life. Um, so what, like that for me is like what keeps me here is the the constant going ons. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you all? Like what keeps you all here in Atlanta instead of going back to New York or just like moving out, out of the state? Central air. <laughs> we'll start there. <laughs> Oh that's a good gosh. point. That, that's a good positive. I actually saw a brand trying to rebrand AC units. Yeah, millennial style. And I was like, mm, that's going to be interesting. 
Um, I saw it on TikTok too. <laughs> live on TikTok. Um, what keeps me here? Family. I mean, our okay. families are both here, but like we truly would not want in any other way. Cost of living is amazing. I think Atlanta still holds like the title of like city with the most trees within yep. city limits. Mm -hmm. We are. We're in the middle of the great pollening as we speak. Yes. Um, so like being able to, to walk outside and be like in just like lush, beautiful everything. Um, access to things mm -hmm. like we can go to New York, we can go to Chicago, we can go to New Orleans, we can go to Miami, and it's all less than two hours away. And I don't know, just love love the scene. Yeah, I mm -hmm. came I came back from New York, and I was like, oh gosh, while I was away in New York, everywhere else kind of got a little New Yorky. Yeah, like there's cool stuff here. Yeah, Atlanta cool has stuff. has always had a sense of community to it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that is the envy of other places. I, I, you know, talking to people, friends from, from other cities and other places, they, they, they've asked me like, what's the deal with the Atlanta community thing? Like, I don't, I don't know what you're special. talking about. But like, <laughs> everybody else knows about it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's really special to be a part of. And it's, it, it would be really hard to yeah. get away from that. Yeah. You know? Atlanta feels like home. Yeah. It is home. Yeah. And it welcomes everyone. Although we make that joke that like we're, we're full. full. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll take you. Like if you can come in, yeah, be come normal, be sweet. Yeah, like, we'll huh? introduce you to everybody. Mm -hmm. We'll get you all your people, your village. Like we'll set you up. Yeah. So that is actually interesting that that you say that because my next question was gonna be how how do you define southern hospitality? And I think you may have just done that. Um, by like welcoming people in and, and introducing them to folks. Well, and sometimes I jokingly call it like I'm gonna single white female you because if you're not used <laughs> if you're not used to that style yeah. of like let me help you and you're like why are you helping me? Mm -hmm. Just because that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do think that, that like I moved here. I didn't know a lot of people, and so I set out to make friends. And my avenue to do that was Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I found like the Atlanta acro yoga community and have one of my best friends now is someone that I just reached out to and said, hey, can I come hang out with you guys? Um, I met a one of my best friends at Metabolic, yeah. a, a gym that Zeb and I uh, used to go to. And so um, it's just like people say it's really hard to make friends as adults. And I don't think it is here. Like it, it hasn't been challenging in the least bit. I say, hi, I'm Natalie and we chat and then I'm like, can I get your number? I would love to hang out with you again. Or you mentioned this, like we should do this. And everyone's like, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not like I don't have the same experience that some of my other friends in other cities do when it comes to meeting adults with similar interest. Um, I'm in the minority like now as a native. I'm definitely. Yeah. In the yeah. The yeah. transplants mm -hmm. have taken yeah. over. But that's yeah. the it's the culture. Um, I will say us transplants have taken over, but we've kept the culture like you went to high school here. What are you talking about? Oh yay, <laughs> <see? Native. laughs> oh, yay. I like to say that, but I need someone that's from Georgia to actually also to validate it. So all right, I've got my peach stamp. But it's the it's the culture here. Like mm -hmm. it's so vibrant and it's like it's in like you cannot refute that. Um, even after, after like visiting Denver or having been out in California, it I you couldn't pay me not to be here. Like, yeah, well, I mean the cost of living alone comparatively will keep you here forever. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, it's it's interesting. So as I mentioned while we were uh, before we were getting started, we relocate a lot of like the majority of our team to Atlanta, but we have to have the conversation of like cost of living is different here, and also just like. I'll, I'll use my own words here, but just like the value of life that you get here mm. is so high um, of like what you pay for just like existing in the city. You get a lot of experiences by just being present mm -hmm. in whatever neighborhood that you're in. Um, it's like a lot of stuff comes to you when you're in the city. Um, I can't speak for the suburbs because I have, I haven't lived in the suburbs, so I don't really know like what that experience is like, but in the city, it's just like when you're just out and about, you're going to have a lot of different experiences with a lot of different people. And that's really hard to describe to someone who's one, never been to Atlanta, never been to the Southeast. Um, so it's like, like if you all had to plug Atlanta for someone that you're trying to get to move here or at least just come visit, what would you say? 
I mean, it's the best of both worlds. I, we actually say this in our house all the time. It's the best of both worlds. We have like our friends from New York who have moved here. We have mm-hmm. all the friends that we grew up with here and two totally different vibes, like mm-hmm. two totally different vibes. Um, it, it's just a place where like it's, you've got that like, yes, Southern thing, but like all the good parts of being Southern, not all the bad stuff. Cause it's Atlanta, man. Mm-hmm. There's like 6 million people here and there's 6 million people outside of Atlanta and the state of Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just, I don't know. It's like doing its own thing. It's this like Nashville gets called, what is it? The little big town. Mm-hmm. I think that's what mm-hmm. they call Nashville. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Atlanta is like that. Yeah. It's, it's more, I mean, granted I was born and raised here, but it's one of the smallest places I've ever lived. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've only been here five years, something like that. And it, it's like we went, we worked out at the same gym. It's and, like one know, it's degree weird. of separation in Atlanta. Always. If, Always. You, so if you can weird. talk like how we were like, oh, wait, I graduated from that high yeah. school. Yeah, and that's <laughs> random. <laughs> By the way, that there's is. so many high schools out there. <laughs> it is. It's such a small world. Um, what, what else, like besides... Uh, food we've talked a lot about food and now we're all starving um and music like an art like is there anything else that we haven't touched on that's just like super appealing either thing to see thing to do thing to experience um the music the art that was good and we like kind of touched on and talk about walkability Mm -hmm. but i think it's super important for people to come down here and see walkability because like thinking of walkability in new york and then taking somebody to the belt line yeah. is different. Completely different. Yeah, but in New York, you have to take everything you own with you while you're going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And here you can just kind of like casually be. Um, I just think it's it's just something that I think everyone should experience at least once mm-hmm. what, before writing it off. Because it's very hard to tell people that are not from Atlanta how much you love Atlanta because they look at you like, well, you live there. Well, duh. And it's like, no, I choose to stay here. Like I, exactly. I could be anywhere else. Yeah. And I actively decide to be here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So I, it's the culture. It's the food. Like, Barred none. Like their LA's food was not great. And people that live in LA also oh, wow. say that. Fighting it yeah. is, it is. But people that live there were like, mm-hmm. I'm not here for the food. Yeah. In Atlanta, you can come and solely be like, I want to dedicate a year to food. And yeah. you're never gonna get a year to getting to everything on Beaford Highway and you still don't get there. Exactly. Couldn't yeah. even put a dent in it. Um that, I, I do think that's like a big poll, whether it's food related or just like experience no matter how much time that you dedicate to experiencing something new in the city, it's not enough. Like there, there's always new, there's always I new. I was going to say, yeah, because it's always growing. There's always, it's constant. There's always something new happening, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It, like when I usually find out about um, like the interlock or whatever, when it's happening, I'm not somebody that gets news in advance. I need to find out how to get on those lists though. <laughs> um, and it's always just like, I love it. And I'm just like, okay, now what's coming in? And I save all the restaurants. I save all the shops. I'm like, okay, I got to experience that. I got to do this. I got to plan this. I try to make reservations at places to make sure I can like get in. Um, But before they open, it's just like, for me as someone that likes to experience the city, it is just, it's never, the possibilities are never ending here, which I I personally appreciate. Um, Just the, the, the frequent opportunities I have to do something new. Totally. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of wrapping up in case anybody has questions for either of you all or just wants to, to reach out. Um, how would they find you all? Well, the best way to find me is to come to the restaurant because I, uh, I am in the minority in not having personal social media. Okay. I gave it up after I opened the restaurant. I wanted to stop focusing on that and just put all of my focus Kudos. onto my business. Mm-hmm. And uh, hot take, I have not regretted it for a second. Good. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. So come see me at Redbird. Okay. Come come by for biscuits on Saturday, Sunday morning. I work the window. I love I that. I do shtick. We just talk and make jokes. <laughs> Amazing. And I do always ask if you're there and you haven't been there the last couple <gasps> of times I've been. The last time you were there... It was it was a tough night. <laughs> it was a tough night. We were having some staffing problems. I.e., Chef was working the grill station that night. There you go. Okay. And I was in the weeds. There you go. It was it was tough. So we I slept like, it in the morning, or you were you were just you were just back working. Can't, we just keep going. C- yeah. Couldn't come Sleep, say hello. Who sleeps in. I don't know. What's Not this, I. It's a strange language you speak. <laughs> 
That is too funny. No. Yeah. So yeah, come see me at Redbird. What's your what's the handle? Redbird ATL. Uh, at Redbird underscore ATL. Okay. All right. Yeah. Nice. And I'm uh, Lauren Vinny Harden. My name. Um, I do not have a beautifully curated Instagram. I am very much about like this is real life. This is authentic. I love your Instagram. <sighs> I love it. You were just like talking <laughs> right into hot mess. Uh, your your tagline is like um, something kids and chaos. chaos. And I was oh. just like, yes, we loved it. You can we see my it. you can see my my TikTok recaps where I'm like, I am so old, and why am I doing this? But it's fun. <laughs> They're fun. Yeah, They're fun. That's right? what social media is about. Is yeah, to ha- have a good time. It's very messy over there, but I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you all so much for coming on. Well, I had the best time about talking about all of this. And Zeb, I was on uh, Redbird's website. Um, um, today and realize that you all do restaurant rent outs. We do. Okay, yeah. we're doing it. We're Hit having me a, up. We're having a Hermes party. Oh yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's that'll be it. a good time. Oh, that'd be a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you all so thank much. You. We really thank appreciate you. it. For being here. All right, toodles.